Welcome back. Weaving the natural world to the man-made one, Michael Moran uses centuries-old crafts to make functional art. And we are lucky today to have him here with us. And he brought with him some of the beautiful handmade furniture pieces he makes right here in the Low Country. First, welcome to the show. Mm, thank you. Thank and you. You've, we've got to start with what inspires you to make these pieces because they're beautiful, like the table that you loaned us this morning <laughs> for, yeah. for the main Our set. coffee table, yeah, it's yes. beautiful. Um, I'm really driven by the materials a lot more than anything. There's a design notion that I'll have in mind, but very much a lot of the materials um, I'll look at and spend a lot of time with as to where I feel like they need to go. I have a wall in my shop that is pretty much full up with boards that have been there for anywhere between six months and three years that um, for gallery pieces, I do gallery and commission pieces, but I'll often look at them, spend some time with them, and try and put them in a place where I feel like they really belong and shows best their natural character versus now, trying to force them into something. Now those boards have to get into your shop somehow. Where do you get your boards from? They, um, they go sometimes long journeys, sometimes very short. It's always long time-wise. Um, there's a little mill in Pennsylvania I work with. There's a mill in North Carolina. There's a mill in Illinois and also in the upstate of South Carolina. Wow. Um, all of them are very envi environmentally friendly, um, sustainable mills. So I'll go through, a lot of times I'll go visit the mills, see the logs, have them cut the way I want them cut. Um, then they have to go through an air drying process, which is generally between six months and two years, and then a wow. kiln drying process, which is anywhere between a month and three months. And I like how it seems that you try to incorporate the knots and the splits, all of the blemishes, I guess, in wood, and you incorporate it into the piece of furniture you're making. Right. Well, it's, I mean, it's interesting. It's traditionally thought that those are blemishes, but I feel like that's the character in the wood. That's what makes it really beautiful. And those are the things that I think are muted in a lot of the modern furniture we see is we forget the materials and the significance of those materials. Well, let's start first with the coffee table yeah, because it's got a big gorgeous. split right <laughs> in the middle, but it's perfect just like that. Yeah, it's, it's a butternut, which is um, it's technically a white walnut. Everything here is black walnut except for that top, which is butternut. And it's, it's a book match piece, which means it was one piece that was cut in half and flipped open. So if you ah. look at it close, there's a perfect line of symmetry that runs through the middle of it, and all the grain radiates. It's out like a hot dog bun split wide open. Kind of, yes. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what Michael was thinking when yes. he was making it, yes, right? Yes, when I saw that, when I saw that. And then if you look at some of the other pieces, like the panels on the doors are book matched as well. So you can see there's a line of symmetry that runs to the middle, and it's the same piece that's flipped open, so the grain repeats itself. The drawer faces on that piece as well. There's a line of symmetry dead center, and wow. then opens out from there. I, can you open one of those drawers? Because I think that's also a beautiful part, is the inside. You don't get to see this too often. It's hard first to find real wood furniture around mm. town if it's not an antique. But I mean, just look how beautiful it is on the inside as yeah. well. Yeah, and you don't always see that. A, a lot of times you see the laminate on the outside and, right, and right, it's right. cheap. Right, <laughs> well, I mean... It's and functional, it's, it does its job. It's functional. But. It's the idea of building furniture that's going to last for generations versus pieces that are going to last right. until the next trend comes and you want a different piece. And that's what we were talking about a little bit before. We said that some of the beautiful wood pieces that we have are actually antiques. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's been much less of a focus um, on the trade aspect and on building things that are endearing and enduring in a right. lot of ways. Um, so it, there's, there's a lot of energy I put into trying to share the trade and trying to keep the trade going um, yeah. and to educate people about that this is something that's out there that's available that if you're going to spend the time and money in it then you can really get something that means a lot to you Great. and that is significant and will last mm -hmm. a very 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 long time. So where can we see your pieces of furniture and artwork? Well I've got I just have a new website that launched that's um, michaeljamesmoran.com um, and then also I have two galleries I work with. One is called Plum Elements, which is on Lower King Street, and the other one is called Margot Kaufman Gallery, which is online right now at margotkaufmangallery.com. All right, great. Well, thank Perfect. you for sharing Michael, thank your you. craft with us. We yeah. appreciate it. Thanks Something for keeping it alive. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, from handcrafted furniture to the art of writing a crafty story, we are talking handbags and homicides uh -oh. with author Dorothy Howell right after this. It's Low Country's Promise Night at the River Dogs, Monday at the Joe. Kids who signed up for the Catch the Reading Bug program at their local library wear your blue bracelet to get into the game for free. Low Country's Promise is sponsored by Heritage Trust and ABC News 4.